Bentley Stadium, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the 73rd meeting a moment ago, the Alabama Crimson Tide, ranked number one in the country, undefeated. But they have lost their last six in a row to this bunch. The Auburn Tigers with a five and six record coming into this time the game, but they have never lost to the Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. Alabama won the toss. They have elected to defer to the second half. And that means that Lee Tiffin will kick off. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson with you on a murky late November afternoon. Tristan Davis, number nine, grabs it at the four. Bounce down as he gets to the 20-yard line. Marquise Mays, number four. Make it Mark Barron, number four. Double numbers here. Cody Burns is the starting quarterback. The sophomore has thrown for 937. Starting lineups brought to you by Chick-fil-A, Ziemba, Green, Bosley, Barry, and Pugh up front. Rod Smith. Montez Billings and done the wideouts. McKenzie the tight end and Mario Fannin gets the start at tailback. First down from the 20. It's Fannin. Gets a crease on the right side and moves it out near the 25-yard line. Defensively for the Crimson Tide and already a few words are exchanged. It'll be Greenwood, Cody, and Dederick up front. The linebackers, Reamer, McLean, Hightower, and Brandon Fanny. And in the secondary, Arenas, Woodall, Johnson, and Kareem Jackson. Nick Saban, second year head coach at Tuscaloosa. Second and five. Right side, Fannin. He's going to get close to the first down out near the 30-yard line before Dante Hightower makes the tackle well it's interesting both teams here have had two weeks to prepare for this game i suspect though that alabama had their minds on a little bit more than just this game where auburn probably you know they're all in in this game already we've seen auburn comes out with an on balance first down 10 auburn tristan davis is in at a wideout eye formation again as they go from under center, here's Burns, right side, mix up. That was intended for Rod Smith, number 80. And Rod Smith blew the assignment. Now remember, we all know it. It's well documented. Auburn, because it's going to be a corner blitz here, will show. And Cody Burns reads it right. Rod Smith does not. Auburn started out in the spread and have even been practicing on Sundays to get back to their old offense from a year ago when they take the ball under center. They go from the spread now. Ben Tate, number 44, is on the field. Five on the play clock. Got to hurry. They beat it. Pitch left. Fanning. We welcome you to the opening moments of the Iron Bowl, Auburn and Alabama. It's the opening series of the game. Auburn has picked up one first down. They are looking at a third and five from their own 36-yard line. Cody Burns, the quarterback, across the middle, caught for the first down. That's Robert Dunn, number three, and Auburn has picked up its second first down in the early going. That's a gain of 10 Burns to Dunn. It is a murky, not cold, but a murky November afternoon, 58 degrees, and the forecast for cloudy skies had heavy rain overnight and into the morning hours. This is the 73rd meeting between these two, only the seventh meeting ever in Tuscaloosa. Alabama has never defeated Auburn in its home city. First down and 10. Burns rolls out and throws it 
Too high, incomplete, out of bounds. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, and the Iron Bowl. Yeah, it, it's kind of fun to watch here at Auburn because last time we saw them against Tennessee, the game that we did, Vern, they were all spread, obviously, and, and now they're so much different. So as I watch these plays unfold, I'm not sure if Alabama even knows exactly what they're going to get at each snap. And Nick Saban builds his defense around tendencies. I'm not sure he has any idea early what Auburn will feature in this game. Second down 10 from the eye. Burns draw play. Mario Fannin, who gets the start at tailback today. And he is jammed up. It'll be third down and 10. And a quick note for those of you in Alabama who joined us at the kickoff. Georgia Tech did prevail over Georgia 45-42. They put on a ground game for the ages, did Georgia Tech in that win. Well over 200 yards rushing in the second half alone. And now Alabama has, and their stout defense, has Auburn exactly where they want them. They, I don't believe Alabama thinks Auburn has any chance to beat them if they have a bunch of third and longs in this game. And they're looking at third and 11 here. Cody Burns, the sophomore, drops back under pressure, darts out, and throws it right. That'll be incomplete. It'll be the first fourth down of the ball game. Rod Smith, the intended receiver. If you're going to play defense for Nick Saban, you must be aggressive. He just will not allow his defensive backs to sit back and allow them to move the chains down the field. And right there, third and long, aggressive defense by Johnson. On fourth down, Clinton Durst is on to punt, and the always dangerous Javier Arenas. Five career punt returns, four touchdowns. That is a school record, and he's got two of those five this year. Durst, line drive, bounces at the 28-yard line, and uh, Arenas is going to let it limp inside the 10, so a very effective punt by Clinton Durst. Senior day at Alabama, only nine scholarship seniors. The Stars, Antoine Caldwell, the center. Rashad Johnson, the safety. And the third-year starting quarterback, John Parker Wilson. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. John Hancock. Chick-fil-A. And by Budweiser. Brian Denny Stadium, 92,000 plus on hand for the Iron Bowl, the 73rd meeting. Here's an Alabama team, I think fair to say, unexpectedly 11-0 at this point of the year. And an Auburn team that is struggling 5-6. and six. How did Alabama get to this spot? You know, one of the great things about college football is there's a lot of different ways to win. And Alabama's doing it the old-fashioned way. They're playing power football. And then they have a difference maker at wide receiver in Julio Jones. Watch for them to try to hit Auburn deep early in this football game. Auburn needs to make it a football game, and maybe they can get into the heads of Alabama and say, six in a row? What, what do they got some hex on this guy? Alabama, of course, needs this win, plus a win against Florida next week to get a shot at the national championship. Auburn, on the other hand, Having won six in a row in this series, needs a win to avoid their first losing season since 1999. On first down, a two-yard plunge. We'll look at the lineups presented by Chick-fil-A, John Parker Wilson, career leader in yards and touchdowns in Alabama Crimson Tide history. This is a very good offensive line. Smith, Johnson, Caldwell, Davis, and Davis up front. Julio Jones is one of the wideouts, along with Mike McCoy, two tight ends, and the one running back is Glenn Coffey, who's over 1,000 yards for the season. John Parker Wilson backs up. That one is tipped, and it's incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 from the seven-yard line defensively as Antonio Coleman got a hand on that one. This is a fairly good off a defense. Coleman, Tez Doolittle, said Derek Marks, Goggins up front. The linebackers are Stevens, Josh Bynes, and Evans. And the secondary, Gerard Powers, McNeil, Zach Etheridge, and Walt McFadden. Third and nine. 
From the spread, John Parker Wilson, Julio Jones comes in. There's a tandem to the right. Wilson wants to throw from his end zone. He'll have to tuck it and run. And he is far short of the first down. That ball came out. I don't know if his knee was down or not. Looked like Michael Goggins was there, number 49. And Alabama three and out. See, that's the smartness, though, of John Parker Wilson. You can't force it down coming out. You've got a good defense. You're playing against a struggling offense. You have to make sure coming out. Nothing wrong with a punt early in the game. That brings on P.J. Fitzgerald, an average of 42 yards. Robert Dunn he is back to receive it. He's perched between the 45 and 50 of the Auburn Tigers. Fitzgerald, this is fairly short, a fair catch call for and taken at the Alabama 49-yard line. That's a 37-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Underway from Tuscaloosa, the Iron Bowl. When you've only won five games at Auburn going into the Iron Bowl, it's, it's not a successful year. You know, and we don't look for moral victories. We don't look for excuses. No, I don't think anything needs to be said. I think uh, everybody knows the, the magnitude of this game and and uh, what everything holds with it. I mean, we've been playing these guys since we've been here five years, and, and they got six years on us. Uh, our fans love this game. It gives them bragging rights, and they've had bragging rights for some 2,500 days now. And... Uh, uh, they never get tired of it. Definitely important for us to go out and uh, play well and uh, come out with a victory. I mean, it'll mean a lot to us. It'll mean a lot to, to the legacy that we're trying to leave here, that uh, the, the balance was back. John Parker Wilson, that was the celebration in the wake of the overtime victory at LSU, 21-14. So here we are with Cody Burns, the starter now. And, of course, the most publicized firing of first-year offensive coordinator Tony Franklin at Auburn. But since that firing, the Auburn Tigers are 1-4. and four, And they've gone back to a much more traditional offense. Here's Burns under center. Play action rolls out. Lobs it out. It's caught by Gabe McKenzie, number 83. And uh, let's spend a moment with Tim Brando in New York. Thank you, Vern. Florida goes up on Florida State in very wet conditions. Percy Harvin takes the direct snap, goes in from nine yards out, a nine-play, 65-yard drive. Florida State has since kicked the field goal. Texas Tech is leading Baylor early, and Boston College looking to win the ACC Atlantic up on the turfs. Back to you, Vern. All right. Thank you, Tim. Florida Gators, fourth straight wins versus Florida State. And we'll see them next week in the SEC title game. This is Rolando McLean making the tackle on Mario Fannin. Well, Franklin came in, much publicized new offensive coordinator, going to run the spread. And uh, he was fired midway through the season. This is when he was fired after evaluating where we are at this point best interest in the Auburn football program to make the change. Well, I went through something like that when I was in college. We ran the wishbone for the first three games, and one of the reasons it didn't work was because I wasn't a good wishbone quarterback, but we had to revert back. It's hard. Believe me, it is really hard. You have to install your offense week by week, piece by piece. Here's Burns back across the middle. Drop. See, that's that aggressiveness. You just must be aggressive if you're going to play. Derek Winter was the intended receiver. It'll be fourth down. You see, with Tony Franklin, four and two without. And uh, the numbers have improved slightly. But the chaos has left. It, it, uh, Tommy Tuberville told us earlier this week. It wasn't working in practice. It wasn't working in the games. And I was afraid I was going to lose my players. Right. And a few of his staff. I think he was right. Oh, what a punt. First one was a rugby, and this one's sky high. And it's over the head of Javier Arenas. And Durst nails Alabama for the second time. Well, the early star of the game is the punter. 7.36 to go opening quarter. Clinton Durst has pinned Alabama back inside the five for the second time, or inside the ten. And uh, nine seniors for this Alabama team. For more on the senior class, 
Here's Tracy Wilson. That's right, Vern. This senior class may be small, but they have made a huge impact here. They've been through the highs. They've been through the lows. Head coach Nick Saban saying, this senior class is going to be, in my mind, the group that sort of turned it around because they bought in. Their commitment and the perseverance they've shown has had a huge impact on the change that has been made here in two years. This senior class, guys, has never beaten Auburn. Senior Rashad Johnson telling me yesterday a win today would add to the legacy they are trying to leave, and that is that battle. Emma is back. Vern? All right, Tracy, thank you. From the five, first down and ten. And off Glenn Coffey, number 38. And he runs right into the middle linebacker, Josh Vines, number 17. Hey, I, I, Trey Blackman was the projected middle linebacker for this Auburn team, but Vines has stepped up and done a nice job. Now, so there's a lot of pressure in this game, but I didn't expect I'd choke first. Okay, I, kinda, <laughs> <laughs> I said there's a lot of pressure on Auburn. I meant Alabama. It's been bothering me since I said it. Of course, the pressure is on Alabama. It's not that I don't listen to you, <laughs> but I didn't notice it. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about how to set up a pressure point in college football. What you do is you find a great player. This time it's Andre Smith, and you ride the guy. It might be a tailback, could be a quarterback. Usually it's a wide receiver for this Alabama football team. It's the left tackle. There's been no one in the SEC that's been able to stop this guy. And when they run the ball left, they could pretty much depend that they're going to have a successful play. Well, they've got a third and two here. Let's see if they go left. Under center is John Parker Wilson. They will come right. And they get the first down plus. Coffee to the 22. Well... The great thing about a, a running offense is that you can get defenses leading one way and then attacking both sides, and then off of that, you can set up on tight end blocking and then tight end misdirection passing game. That's what drives these linebackers crazy. When do they go to the tight ends, and also when do they go deep? It's first down. Here's a play action and a comeback pattern. Oh, no, it wasn't tight either. Ends. I was it. It is the tight yeah. end. Yeah. Well, you just know what's going to happen. You've got two playmakers. This kind of reminds me of that old Washington Redskin offense that Gibbs used to run. You set up those tight ends. You bang, you bang, you bang. And then you just give them the ball and keep those linebackers honest. And that's how you'll be able to run the ball. And then, now, the interesting thing is you can't do this without a dynamic wide receiver. And they've got one in Julio Jones because Auburn must commit a safety and a corner to him. They'll come right again. Big hole. Here's Coffee. Out to the 47. Auburn's linebackers are somewhat undersized. They're built, this defense is built to defense spread teams. Look at that blocking. Look at that hole. You got Caldwell, Johnson, Davis blowing it out, and Coffee, another one of those 1,000 yards rushers for Alabama. They've had nine in the history here at Alabama. Well, he is over 1,100 yards for this season. We saw him against Kentucky rush for 218. Here's the toss. Coffee going left. And he is jammed up and dropped for a loss by Michael Goggins, number 49. Yeah, you know, you can see that Auburn had to be leaning to their right or Alabama's left. Now, so far early in this game, Alabama has been breaking that tendency and running right. They try to go left in Alabama. And Paul Rhodes, their defensive coordinator, says, uh-uh. We know you're going to run left beside 71 sooner or later, and they were ready for that play. Loss of four, second and 14. Three split wide right, one to the left, and John Parker Wilson out of the spread. It's Auburn sending three defensively. There's the pass. It's caught at the 41-yard line. The catch made by number 15, Darius Hanks. Yeah, and Jim McElwine said, I asked him yesterday, Who's been coming on for you? You know, what guy would you circle? And he goes, you know, Darius Hanks has been doing a nice job for us. Look at that catch. Spinning around, coming back, and making the play. You know, that's another one of those passes that we talk about all the time. There's McElwine right there, offensive coordinator. He wears his glasses just like I do. <laughs> 
He could throw the ball too. Yeah. Quarterback in Eastern Washington. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. One of the things that this Alabama team has not done much is give it up. They're plus six in turnovers. No, most of that, though, is because they've had the lead and they've not been having to kind of force and kind of strain to do things. Now, you know, that time Wilson and Caldwell probably is, you know, veteran players on this team and have been working together a while. You wonder how that one got dropped. I was down on the field where, you know, it was a little, like you say, murky here. Right. It's a little slick, and I bet the ball sometimes gets slicks down there from that kind of wet turf. We've got a window here where no rain is expected. It rained heavily overnight and this morning. No showers this evening. Up the middle. And that's going to leave a third and probably seven. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, Vern, the theme of the day, teams that lack motivation to win being upset. Kansas here going up as Todd Reesing hits Kerry Meyer. This was with under a minute to play. A 26-yard pass for a touchdown. Jeff Wolford can't hit this 54-yarder. So the fighting man, Geno's beat Mizzou, who's already representing the Big 12 North in the Big 12 championship game. Back to you. Ooh, that, uh, it's one of the one of the <laughs> toughest things about the two division parts of college football now conferences is when you have two good teams in one side and one not so good team in the other. John Parker Wilson caught. Wow, Julio Jones knew he was going to get popped in the back. Yeah. And Gary just talked about this talented young man from Foley, Alabama. He is, and he's absolutely fearless. He's had his big games in the big games, and this time he runs right into coverage, and he had a big hit that time coming from the backside by Powers. I think John Parker Wilson thought it was a man coverage, and it actually was a zone coverage, and he led Jones right into Powers. Time has been called by the officials. They will measure to see if Jones got uh, the first down. Now you see the numbers for Julio Jones had the big game at LSU. Right. Seven for 128 in that one. Well, yeah. yeah. smidgen. Let's see, they're at the 29 yard line. It would be a 46 yard field goal. Lee Tiffin's long for the year was against Clemson. Nick Saban said, we're going to go for it. Yeah, Tommy Tuberville is right on the line there looking at this, and he thinks that they got a good spot. I wonder if he's thinking about challenging this. Because he's feeling that that was a real generous spot on that play. I saw him just going right down the line and straddling it. Well, he's talking about it. Well, he's just trusting that the replay official. Ah. Yeah, it looks like he might. Tuberville always seems to come with a wry right. smile. He, he was standing on the side. I didn't even recognize him before the game. He called me over. And he says, oh. The Auburn head coach has requested a timeout to challenge the spot on the field. The always popular Tommy Tuberville, yes. especially here in Tuscaloosa. Now let's take a peek at this. The yellow line is in the box right there in the thing. Ball is... Yeah. You know, that was pretty close, I think. It was between, definitely between the 30 yard line and the 29 yard right. line. They couldn't have been that far off. Maybe the length of the football off, maybe. That's splitting hairs. You know, I, I think, Vern, what's key here, and Tommy Tuberville knows it. Remember, the Alabama coaches told us how key it will be in this game to get up early because they don't feel Auburn has that come from behind potential. I think Tuberville knows that also, and he's willing to use a timeout here to keep Alabama from getting this very short fourth down play. Complete. Okay. Forward practice. Yeah. I'd say maybe move the football back a foot. A football. Maybe a football. Yeah. Maybe a football. But I, I'm telling you, he is sensing the same thing that the Alabama coaches are sensing is how early scores can really play in this football game. You know, a lot of teams are built to come from behind. This Auburn team isn't. In fact, they're not even built to, to come from ahead. They were they had four games where they led by 10 points that, that they lost in the first eight games. Here's Matt Austin. After review, the ruling on the
the field stands as called. It will be fourth down. Yeah, see, that's the tough part. I mean, we like I said, it's splitting hairs. It's how do you judge whether, you know, that should go back a half a football, a half a yard. It's hard to argue. So Auburn charged with a timeout. And it will be fourth and about a foot, and foot and a half. Remember for the replay official, if it's not obvious, he goes with the call on the field. James Allison is our replay official today. And after all of that, it will be fourth and a foot for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Julio Jones goes wide to the left. Double tight ends with McCall and Walker and big Andre Smith to the left side. They've also got a superb center in Antoine Caldwell. Yeah. And the but, guards aren't bad. No, they're, they're – <laughs> come on. It's Alabama, and they run the ball well, and they've had a lot of experience. Now, you know, this is – in this case, it's usually been a John Parker Wilson quarterback sneak. Let's see what they do. Four rushing touchdowns in the last four games for John Parker Wilson. He appears to have it. And he splits the difference between Marlon Davis and Antoine Caldwell. Well, we were at that LSU game when they had that big quarterback sneak for a touchdown for John Parker. This was about the same situation. So funny watching John Parker Wilson grow as a player. It's one of the things I, you know, when I took this job and came into this conference, really I wanted to do is follow guys get better as they go through their career. And following John Parker get better is kind of the fun of watching this conference and him grow. Well, he was 13 and 13 as a starter until this year. Tack on 11 wins in this season. Here's Wilson. Tipped away. It was intended for Nikita Stover. And it's knocked free. Let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim. All right, Vern, it would be a quagmire in Tallahassee. Florida goes up 14-3 to at Tim Tebow. Connects with Aaron Hernandez for a seven-yard strike. They're just underway in the second quarter. Now, that, Vern, would be a frog strangler, wouldn't it? Back to you. Whoo! It does not look pretty. The Gators have averaged 53 points per game since their loss to Ole Miss at uh, home. Tebow might win the Heisman just for his speech. I agree. And there's the run by Coffey, tackled by Nico Thorpe, number 15. That's a gain of nine. Well, this is really interesting how Alabama has self-scouted themselves. I believe this. Two weeks, they've taken a real long look at themselves and said, you know what, we're going to run the ball the other way. We really are going to run the ball the other way. Now, Vern, I asked each coach we saw yesterday, what, I asked them two questions. One, <laughs> one about this game and one about Florida. Nobody cracked, did they? Well, one guy. Ah, no, we can't say that. <laughs> it's off the record. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Third down and uh, two feet. Left side this time. Whoa. And it's going to be fourth down again. And this time, the need a little longer than the previous four. I think that was Zach Etheridge that got up there, the free safety it was. in the hole. And yeah, they're going to have to take the points here. Lee Tiffin, whose father earned uh, everlasting fame in this game in 1985 when Van Tiffin kicked a 52-yard field goal to win this game over Auburn. This is his son. This is from 37 yards out for the first points in the game. His weakness is low kicks. High snap. Kick is up. And the kick is good. Gary says that because he had a low kick blocked that led to overtime in Baton Rouge a few weeks ago. That's the end of the first. Huge drive for Alabama. They went from their own five and got the field goal. We'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Steel, the signature industry in the state of Alabama and the symbol of one of college football's fiercest rivalries, Auburn versus Alabama. Apple steps up the pocket. Big Robert Johnson, touchdown, Auburn! Go crazy, Cadillac! Go crazy! Time. Auburn with a whooping. Hope you don't need to use the woodshed anytime soon, folks. The Auburn Tigers are going to win their fifth in a row. That's your ball game, folks. Six in a row.
Auburn versus Alabama. This is the Iron Bowl. 73rd version of the Iron Bowl. On your left, it's Nick Saban, second year as a head coach at Alabama. Tommy Tuberville very famously held up four fingers and a thumb, and the index finger on his other hand indicates six in a row. Lee Tiffin will kick off after the 37-yard field goal. Mario Fannin and Tristan Davis are the deep men. We're underway with the start of the second quarter. This will be Tristan Davis at the 10. And that's about it. He gets out to the 20-yard line, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Auburn Tigers. And, uh, Gary, you said a while ago they don't come from behind so well, but they really don't come from ahead. They won't have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, well, I get myself in trouble sometimes doing that stuff. You know, what's interesting to me is both teams, and I, I try not to go with the obvious, but sometimes you got to talk about turnovers. Nobody wants them, but I think they come at it from both ends. Alabama believes they can't lose this game unless they help Auburn, and Auburn knows if they beat themselves with turnovers, they have no chance. They scored at the end of an 11 play 76 yard drive. And here is Cody Burns play action. Back to throw, looks deep left side. Double coverage for Shot Johnson. Comes over to help Kareem Jackson. And the senior from Sullivan, Alabama, who has five interceptions, almost got number six. Number one job of a quarterback when you play against Alabama is controlling the safeties. There's Rashad Johnson. Everyone that plays against Alabama must know where the two safeties are. They play very deep. They remind me of the way Reggie Nelson had an impact on Florida two years ago when he played safety for him. They get to almost every ball that's thrown more than 25 yards downfield. Second down and 10. Here's the toss. And Ben Tate, number 44, tries to go around and is out near the 30-yard line. Rashad Johnson, a one-time walk-on from Sullivan, Alabama, had a career game against LSU with three interceptions. He does, and we were talking to Nick about what he looks for in defensive backs, and he said tackling number one and ball skills number two. Look at the ball skills that Rashad Johnson has. He says, I want my defensive backs being in position and then not be able to find the ball. It kills you, those big chunk plays. His alma mater, the Sullivan, Sullivan Blue Devils, won their playoff game oh, last night. Oh, you're ready. Oh, yeah. They beat Clay County. Here's Fannin out to the left. Tries to avoid the contact and the tackle, and he picks up a first down out near the 41-yard line. Dante Hightower, number 30. It'll this be, is a uh, big Sullivan and Leroy for you the You got it. Our big time play here by Cody Burns. He's growing as a quarterback. You know, he first, first time, just three or four games ago, he even played the full game. And now he's growing into an offense. It's his third offense in two years. And you can see the, his potential. I'm sure Alabama's worried about him running. So anytime he completes a pass, it's a huge bonus. Now for the season, he's hitting 55%. Started the season behind Chris Todd, the junior college transfer. Todd had... Uh, Shoulder problems and was very ineffective. Here's Burns on first and ten. Handoff. Tate. Well, Cody Burns out of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Well, it looked like the spread was made for Cody, Cody Burns. Everybody, all the Auburn fans said, oh, this is going to be great. The way he runs and throws. We bring in Franklin. We run the spread. We're going to look like all these other teams we see on TV on Saturday night scoring all these points. Too much of a culture shock. Did not work for Auburn. They had to go back. See how his numbers have improved in the last three games. It's second down and seven out of the spread. Alabama shows blitz. They come. That's Cody Burns, and it'll be third down. See, Alabama is playing this formation. Anytime Auburn goes shotgun near, they call shotgun near, you got the back with the tight end, okay? Alabama's gonna sell out to the run. They do not believe they gotta stop the run first. You can see Shot Johnson up there, the safety's up and on the play. Anytime, shotgun, tight end, and running back on the same side, Alabama goes as a running play. He's quite a story, he was a walk-on, not offered any Division I scholarships. Came here and earned one. He is one of nine scholarship seniors who play for Alabama. 
Third and six. It's an illegal formation. It will not count. Oh, dear. Too Ouch. many men in the backfield. Dante Hightower was flying. I don't, I don't know exactly how you say it. Maybe not enough men at the line of scrimmage or too many men in the backfield, but it was an illegal formation. There it is. I'll go either way. Yep. I'm amphibious. Yeah, you do go. Yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't see one guy out of the picture, but uh, five people were in the backfield that time. You need seven on the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, the penalty is declined. Clinton Durst, who's had two very effective punts, is on for the third time. And Javier Arenas this time moves up near the 20-yard line. Well, will they do the rugby or will they do the pop-up? Well, let's see. I'm guessing rugby. Uh, yes. Wisdom of the ages. Yeah. Bad punt. Shank one down. Now give that. See, that won't show up on Arenas' stats. But give those stats and great field position to Javier Arenas right there. 20-yard punt. Well, people care a, a lot about this game, don't you think? I think so, too. Log on to CBSSports.com for the latest news and expert analysis leading up to the SEC championship game. We've got every angle covered including a live stream of the game itself. It's all exclusively at CBSSports.com. While we were away. Whoa. Claire Cream on the official there. And that's Bobby Morrow. And watch Tommy Tuberville. Oh, yeah, he's working him, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy keeps it in perspective. Uh, you know, but when you're, when you're five and six, there's no perspective no. from Auburn fans, is it? You know, Alabama's got to be great. They only got three points, but their drive started on the seven and the four. And here's John Parker Wilson on first down. Across the middle, flags are down. This could be illegal contact, holding, pass interference, all kinds of options here. <laughs> yeah. Chris Evans, number 59, was in the neighborhood. Well, it looked like they had a delay route going that time. Chris Evans had man-to-man -man coverage, and he looked like he grabbed him. Well, that's on the other side of the field. Holding. Defense, 39. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Ball across the line of scrimmage, so it'll be an automatic first down. That was a shot of Brad Smelly, the other tight end on the play. And, you know, we talked about the two tight ends, but Smelly comes in as a kind of a passing tight end, just a true freshman, has worked his way into this lineup. Smelly, who uh, grew up in Tuscaloosa, is the younger brother of the starting quarterback of the South Carolina Gamecocks. They were hammered by Clemson today. Paul Rhodes, defensive coordinator, says nobody throws the ball deeper more than Alabama. When will they go deep to Julio Jones? Not this time. That's the handoff to Mark Ingram. I was a little surprised when he said he thought John Parker Wilson threw it greater vertically than Matthew Stafford. I, I Well, he doesn't mean he's right. He just said it. Okay, well, John Parker does throw a nice deep ball. Not taking anything away from him, but throwing to that guy turns out well. You know what John Parker does is he's smart with the deep ball. He establishes where the safety is, and that's why he's been well coached, and a senior quarterback is a guy you can trust to throw the ball deep. You see eight touchdowns, but only five interceptions. Fourth down, a second down, and 11. John Parker Wilson, a little bit of pressure, and it's incomplete. Looks like McFadden might have got a hand on it, Walt McFadden. Chatting with uh, Nick Walker. Yeah, you know what I, I like about what Auburn is doing here is, and I think it's the only way to play Alabama. We saw, saw it early when Kentucky tried to do it to them, and I think, you know, Ole Miss tries it, LSU tried it. You must go man-to-man -man against their receivers. And I think Auburn, as they've gotten healthier in the secondary, is challenging the Alabama receivers, and I think they only really fear one guy, Julio Jones. Third and 11. They got Jones if they want him. Oh, do they ever. He goes right. There he is. 
Wow, the defender playing way yeah, off of him. Get that. Yeah, didn't get that one at all. They, they, they had him. I could have thrown it to him from up here in the booth. This was so obvious. You can't cover anybody eight yards off like this. So you got to give ground. You can't still stand still. And Powers would do better, a better job on a young, tall receiver by getting up underneath him and try to jam him on the line of scrimmage. That basically they conceded a first down, did Auburn. Gerard Powers is 5'10. Julio Jones checks in at uh, six foot four and that's a 15 yard game first down and ten and off coffee nice move here goes coffee touchdown alabama As he scampers down the sidelines and in for six. And Lee Tiffin is on for the extra point. Ryan Selman snaps it back and out of P.J. Fitzgerald hold. Alabama goes up 10 zip. Well, I'll tell you, tight ends right there. Let me put him in linebacker. Chris Evans, watch number 59, get caught up in the trash. Right there, Evans gets caught up. He takes a poor angle, get to the corner, and then Etheridge gets caught up with a bad angle. You get your linebacker and your safety in a bad angle. That's worth seven points. That's bad defense for Auburn, and Alabama's got it going again. CBS. 10-0, 10 10-28 10 to go before the first half break. It was Glenn Coffey's 41-yard run. Young man who has really had a breakout season. Very religious young guy. And uh, over 1,100 yards now in this 2008 season. Here's the kick, and it's taken by Mario Fannett. Well, Glenn Coffey continues to climb up the all-time rushing list. See the lead... Uh, Single season lead held by Bobby Humphrey and then Sean Alexander and Sean Williams and Glenn Coffey has now moved in behind Sean Alexander's 1998 season and he needs only six more to tie him. Well, we talked about tight ends and Andre Smith as creating a pressure point, but I'll tell you that time Drew Davis and Travis McCall did it on the other side and that's been the story. Alabama's been running to their right successfully. On first down and 10 from the 24, Cody Burns. Robert Dunn starts in motion and goes back to the right. Here's the handoff to Ben Tate. He comes right. Arenas with a terrific job of fighting off the block and going down to make the tackle. Let's spend another moment with Tim Brando. All right, Vern, back to Lubbock we go. Texas Tech and uh, Baylor. It's now 14-13 game. Baron Batch scores from a yard out. On the injury front, Michael Crabtree is still nursing that ankle. Graham Harrell also been dinged today. And Florida State added a field goal. It's 14-6 in the Swamp in Tallahassee. Back to you. <laughs> yeah, it looked that way, didn't it? <laughs> like Gainesville West. Second down and seven, 9-41 to go. Here's Burns, comes near side, incomplete. Intended for Rod Smith, number 80. This is not looking good if you're from Tommy Tuberville's perspective or an Auburn fan. They looked so far in this game, even though they've controlled field position, completely overmatched. Cody Burns, rough start. He's 3 of 10 for only 30 yards. Well, you should watch Shad Johnson direct this defense from his safety position. He is something else. Burns near. Eric Anders, number 32. Again, aggressive defense from the secondary led by their quarterback of that defense, 
Chad Johnson. Watch this guy direct everybody around. Changing the defense. Telling them what's coming and then come up and cover his man. Man to man coverage and that allows Nick Saban to bring an extra guy when he plays man. And Eric Anders came in there with a stunt up front. Aggressive nickel defense from Nick Saban in Alabama. Here's Clinton Durst on for the fourth punt. They go for the block. And there's contact, but no flag. And Arenas has it at the 30-yard line. Well, that was a good punt. 52-yard punt. Six on the return. Alabama defense shining in the early going. CBS Sports coverage for the Home Depot SEC continues after this word from your local station. 8.42 to go first half. Alabama with a 10-0 lead in quest of their 12th victory against zero defeats. Look at this coming out with empty on first down. And Glenn Coffey is top of the screen wide right. Yeah. Four-man rush. John Parker Wilson too high. Intended for Julio Jones over the middle. Yeah, not, not bad, though. A little high. Delivered it strong. Great protection. Ball just sailed on him slightly, and Julio could not go up and snag that one. Interesting call on first down. Now, I, I think it's, you know, if you're out Auburn here, what, what do you think? And, and I'm thinking, you know, we got to bring out some sandbags or something. we got to survive this flood here early in this game. we got to get this game to the second half. They trail by 10. Well play, left side, tight end leads the way. It's Coffey. Zach Etheridge with the tackle, but Coffey picks up 18. Watch this technique by Marlon Davis, the right guard on this play. He comes right here, comes around, and logs in the defensive end. Watch this technique. Pulls around and then logs in Coleman. That is just fantastic technique by an offensive guard that knows exactly what he's supposed to do. Come around, read the defensive end, follow, and then Coffee says, God, does it get any easier than this? <laughs> Marlon Davis. It's, it's really a terrific offensive line. Here's play fake. John Parker Wilson lobs it out to his tight end. This is Mick Walker, one of the nine seniors out of Brundage, Alabama. And Glenn Coffey's numbers for the day, he started the day with 1,091 yards, and he's adding to it uh, in heaps. Yeah, he, he is, and, and I know he thinks the same thing we're thinking. This offensive line is so good. If I just do my job, I don't have to do anything spectacular. Just be a normal Alabama running back, and I can do big things with this offensive line. Look right. at how they uh, they flank teams with these tight ends quickly. Shift from one side to the other side, get the tight ends, flank them, and change up that defense. Coffee cuts inside and moves inside the 40. Michael Goggins, number 49, with the stop. Well, you know, we talked about being a little slippy, slippery burn, but Coffey seems to be having no problem out there. Watch this. Plant, skip, and cut. That's a very nice technique by Coffey. Third and one. Coffey over 100 yards already. Midway through the second. Well, it's Baron Huber's in there as the blocking back now. You know you're going to get one on one. You dare just try to go deep here to Julio Jones. He's wide right. Oh. Motion. Brought him off. Senderic Marks, number 94. Could have been uh, uh, Alabama flinched on this play also. That's he's uh, that's he's making that case. Dead ball. Yep. Full start. 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's Mike Johnson up front. Well, it's Andre Smith at left tackle. Mike Johnson left guard. Antoine Caldwell at center. Marlon Davis number 76. Interesting now. Drew Davis number 79. Earlier in the season, Nick Saban talking about his offensive line, and and he said, you know, right tackle. Uh, yeah. But now Drew Davis by the coaching staff has been voted offensive player of the game the last two weeks. And uh, Jim McElwain telling us yesterday he's really playing pretty yeah. well. Smelly back in the game 17 going in motion right there. Yeah. John Parker Wilson. Uh -oh. No flag. Gerard Powers number eight. 
It'll be fourth down. Well, Alabama gave Auburn a big break here on that third and very short, and then they jumped the short route and got through it. Let's see if it happens. Julio Jones. Well, he went right through Julio Jones back on this one. I don't know. Kind of went around him also. It's hard for me to say whether he it didn't look like bad interference. Is there is there such a thing as good not interference? Bad, good interference? <laughs> <laughs> On fourth down, PJ Fitzgerald comes to the near side. It's taken at the 11. Yes, he slipped. Yeah, the sure top was. of the grass is slick. When you play it, you're okay, but you can see a couple slips there. So time taken with 6.09 to go first half. It's 10 zip Alabama. Tommy Tuberville's in his 10th season at Auburn, 14th year as a head coach. We asked him if he was on the spot. Take a look at his highs and lows in his career. SEC championship in his second season, 2003. They finished eight and five. More on that in a moment. In 2004, 13 and zero, and they did not get to the BCS championship game. He was named coach of the year. He's won six in a row in this series. But they have lost four consecutive games. They're five and six. And earlier this week, we asked Tommy, do you feel like you're on the spot? He said, no, I don't. But I didn't feel like I was in the spot in 2003 either. That was the season of the infamous jet gate right side. And just a quick refresher on that one. They were struggling. And uh, the then president at Auburn and the then athletic director, got on Bobby Louder's private plane and in the dark of night flew to Louisville and had a meeting with former offensive coordinator Bobby Petrino. And uh, when news got out, there was an immediate reaction favorable to Tuberville. He survived that. I don't think he's in trouble. I, you know, it's a crazy business. No, no, I, don't know I didn't think want. Sylvester Croom was in trouble uh, this morning either. Well, 47 nothing is not easy to I understand. Sometimes. But eight wins last year should not be forget forgotten. Second down. Now, Sylvester Croom, if you did not hear, resigned as the head coach at Mississippi State. They announced this morning, 21 and 38, and they got into the bowl last year with eight wins, but they were hammered. Matter of fact, one of the lowlights for for. Tony Franklin is the offensive coordinator for Auburn. Was an earlier season game. The final was right, three, to, three to two. I actually believe this is the critical point in the game for Auburn. Remember, Alabama gets the ball to start the second half. They've got to take some time off the clock. Alabama could get it two straight times and blow this game open. Third and seven, blitz coming. Burns back. Incomplete. It was across the middle. Intended for Montez Billings, number 84, and a little high, so the Crimson Tide's going to get it back yeah. with four and a half to go. I, I thought this was absolutely imperative that Auburn find a way, as you see the crossing route, this isn't even really close, this ball is thrown too hard, too high, and a little bit behind, and now Alabama has a chance. They're going to get great field position, and they're going to get the ball here probably two times in a row. Fifth punt already for Clinton Durst and the Auburn Tigers. Here's the rugby kick again. Arenas chases it near side. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful. very good one. Beautiful. 46-yard punt for Durst. 425 to go first half. Alabama by 10. All right, Tim, thank you. And, of course, we will see Alabama and Florida next Saturday afternoon. SEC championship game in Atlanta. John Parker Wilson, Hoover High School, suburban Birmingham. Grew up as an Alabama fan and uh, living a dream this season in his final year. First down and 10. And off the left side, it's Mark Ingram, number 22, the true freshman, and uh, let's go down to Tracy, Tracy Wilson. 
Guys, Glenn Coffey came off the field after that last drive. He was limping a bit on the sideline. They taped his right ankle. He took some pain medicine. As of now, no word on whether he'll go back in. He's still on the sideline. But keep an eye on it, especially with these slick conditions out here. All right, Trace, thank you. Coffey and Upchurch. Upchurch is the number three uh, running back. And there you see Coffey's updated stats and uh, measured against the opposition on second down. Ingram. Oh, great stop. Yes. That was Josh Bynes, a middle linebacker, number 17 well, right see, there. Now, we kind of thought that the pressure was on the Auburn offense to get out of this half. But the Auburn defense can help out and do the exact same thing. You know, it it has that feel of a game that Alabama's in complete control, but it's just 10 nothing. I mean, it just it feels like Auburn can't do anything, but it's not a blowout, obviously. Mark Ingram splits wide to the right on third and seven. He's at the very top of the screen. Out of the spread. Four-man rush. John Parker Wilson steps up and is caught. It'll be fourth down. Yeah. You know, great coverage that time. Let's let's give credit to this Auburn secondary. You know, they were banged up early in the year, but now that they're healthy, they've matching up pretty good here. You can see it. They got the two deep safeties. They're just playing what they call a base cover two zone. Nothing fancy. Everything just kind of taking it short. Had a throw to the top of the screen maybe, but John Parker Wilson had his eyes to the left side. There was nothing there. Well, we talked about Javier Arenas and his punt return ability. Robert Dunn has uh, one return for a touchdown this year. He's back for Auburn and uh, is perched at the 31-yard line. P.J. Fitzgerald. Good one. Fair catch taken by Dunn at the 27 yard line. 42 yard punt, nothing on the return. 219 remaining in the first half. Next Saturday at noon Eastern. Another renewal of the traditional rivalry, the Army and the Navy. They'll get together at noon, and uh, that one is always fun to do. 10-0, 219 to go first half. Well, Auburn has got to find something. I mean, right now they need a first down, but they got to find something and quickly. Brad Lester is on, did not play last week. And number one is not going to get the handoff. Cody Burns shakes the sack and slides out at the 36-yard line. Brandon Fanny, number 98, had Burns in his grasp and blew the tackle. Well, Fanny is doing his assignment exactly the way he's taught, and Cody Burns does a nice job of using, you know, Fanny's leverage against him almost, spitting right out of that tackle. Perfectly defense, but a great play by Burns. Second down and three. Tristan Davis is in the backfield with Lester. Lester goes left. He's got a first down Auburn across the 40 with 1.37 to go. Clock will stop as they move the chains. Well, one of the things that Auburn probably didn't spend a lot of time with, with the spread in the, uh, the offseason, is finding a fullback. Tristan Davis is a tailback playing fullback right there, number nine. Does a nice job here fitting inside and making that crease for Lester to run that ball. Just a little bit of a sense of urgency from the crowd now with 120 to go. Here's Burns left side incomplete. Ali Sharif number 26 was there defensively. Nothing stands out to me more about Alabama secondary every time I watch them is how aggressive they are. So now if I'm a play caller and, and you know you got to be careful if you're a play caller for Auburn because you haven't had a lot of practice or experience at quarterback. What do you do? You got to do some double moves against them. They fight on every short play. On second down, blitz coming from the corner. Burns keeps it. Cuts up the middle. And he's going to have another first down as he reaches the 44-yard line. Plenty of time. Two timeouts left for Auburn. First down, Auburn. Brad Lester with the key block on that run of 13 yards. 106 to go. Burns back, left side, caught to the 35. 
down to the 32-yard line. Catch was made by Rod Smith. And that's a gain of 12 as Fanny makes the tackle. 57 seconds to go. First down, 10. Plenty of comfortable time for Auburn. Two timeouts left. Here's Burns again. He's to the 29 with 45 seconds yeah, to go. Yeah, they'll take timeout right here. Will Tuberville and his Auburn team with a very successful drive, basically running the quarterback. Time taken with the score, 10-0. Forty-four seconds away from the Geico halftime report. Lots going off on this rivalry Saturday. We'll go back to Tim and Spencer in our New York studios. Forty-four seconds to go. The Auburn Tigers. Look at this. The inside the twenty-yard line, they are dead last yeah. of 119 teams in Division One. Yeah, I know they're not there yet, but it just shows you when you start to call plays for Auburn what you're thinking. How do you get in there and score a touchdown? They also will use a new field goal kicker today. He's never tried a field goal in a game this year. There's the pass, and it'll be third down at the 24-yard line. They uh, they have decided to uh, leave Wes Byram on the bench. Now, I'm told he's injured somewhat, but he's also 11 for 19 for the year. So if and when they get an opportunity, it's going to be a fellow named Morgan Hall. Walk-on sophomore. On third down, Burns with the draw play. Now then, see, 14 see that, seconds to go. That completed pass really took the strategy away from Auburn. They didn't want to blow their last time out, but it was third and short, and they knew they had to run the ball. So now they had to take a timeout for the field goal. Five seconds to go. So when we come back, you'll meet Morgan Hull. Number 37 is a walk-on sophomore from Decatur, Alabama. His name is Morgan Hull. No pressure on this kick. He's not attempted a field goal at Auburn in two years. His first try will come from 40 in the Iron Bowl. He might make a memory with this one. 40-yard attempt. Clayton Crowfoot is the holder, and Robert Shiver will snap it back. How about that? Nick Saban took a timeout oh. to freeze the kicker. I wondered. I, it looked like it was perfect. I never saw any signal from the officials. Yep. That's exactly why they stopped the guy. I just hate that rule. I do, too. Just hate it. I'll be darned. He's waiting. He's waiting. Last second timeout, and that's why the officials under the bars did not signal good field goal. It looked perfect, yeah. and I waited and waited and obviously didn't see Saban. See, I, I don't really mind that the coach can call timeout. I just wish the umpire or the head official on the field called timeout so we wouldn't have a play run. You know, if you call timeout, you call timeout, but it should be one of the coach people that don't allow a snap. So Morgan Hull... Gonna have to do it again. No, it's his second kick in the Iron Bowl. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> no pressure on this one. Officially, this is from 39 yards out. And it's blocked. And it is blocked. Brandon Dederick. Well, chalk that one up to Nick Saban. Yep. Couldn't have worked out any better if you're Alabama. Find a way to make a play. And Dederick makes, looks like he makes a play. Number 95. Bobby Greenwood's also up in the neighborhood. Yep, it was. 95. Let's go down to Tracy Wilson with Tommy Tuberville. Coach, it looked like you may have found something offensively on that final drive. And then the block kick. What happened there? Well, we've had about three drops. That's been our problem. You know, if you can't get throw and catch, you can't play against a good defense. That gets them off the running game. We can get our running game go a little bit, but we got to catch the ball when we throw it. We caught it on that last drive. Speaking of the running game, Alabama have a 
having no trouble running the ball. How do you slow them down? Well, we just got to tackle. There's a couple times we missed tackles. Then they got the outside on us on the one long run. We'll be fine. We, we played well enough on defense to win the first half. We just didn't do anything on offense. Thanks, Coach. All right, Tracy, thank you. Brandon Detterick got a hand on the field goal attempt after Nick Saban called timeout to ice him. Let's go back to Tim and Spencer in New York. Iron Bowl, 73rd meeting between Auburn and Alabama. Only the seventh time the two teams have ever played in Tuscaloosa. They first did so in 1895. Auburn won that one. Next, they played here in 1905. Auburn won that one. And they had to wait for the year 2000 before Auburn made its uh, first SEC visit over here. Auburn won that one. And they won in 02, 04, and 06. Now, the Alabama Crimson Tide will kick off, or will receive the ball as we open the second half. And this one, Morgan Hall sends it right through the end zone. Moment ago, Tracy Wolfson chatted with Nick Saban. Coach, you've controlled both sides of the ball in the first half, but Auburn able to stick around. What do you need to do to finish this one off? Well, we stopped ourselves a couple times. We had a penalty on a short yardage situation and didn't play real well in two minutes, but I think we got to score points. I think we played well on special teams. I think we've done a good job offensively, defensively, but we just got to score points. But they're a good team, and we expected a tough battle when we got one. You've had other second half letdowns this year. Did you address that at all in the locker room? No, we've been playing better in the second half, and I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with uh, the attitude that we have right now. And it's all about finishing. Keep the hammer down and finish. Thanks, Coach. All right, Tracy, thank you. Here's John Parker Wilson back on first down. Pumps once, escapes the tackle, and goes to the right, then pulls up. He's got a man deep. There is contact and a flag. Yes, indeed. That's on Walt McFadden, number six. So that one is going to come back. It was intended for Nikita Stover. Well, if this ball had been thrown deep by John Parker Wilson, I know he was on the run. This was a seven-point play. It was obviously pass interference, but a good penalty that time for Auburn because this could have been a seven-point play. It was just badly underthrown by John Parker. And so the penalty will give Alabama a first down and ten. You know, what I was thinking with that timeout by Nick and even the interview with Tracy is he was right on. Nick was um, he, he, all this other stuff is great. Got to score points. But, you know, that's why he makes the big bucks. <laughs> you know, I mean, he, he's got it. You got to say that even that graphic that popped up, the only coach with 10 years experience with no. I mean, he's got it going here. He's well paid. Here's Coffee out to the 40-yard uh, line after the pass interference. So John Parker Wilson, the Alabama Crimson Tide, trying to go 12-0 and and get into the championship game and keep their dreams alive. How do you assess how they played in the first half? I, solid. I think they know what we talked about early, Vern, is that they, if they don't beat themselves, Alabama, they don't think that Auburn can beat them. So they're playing a little close to the best. However... Auburn is in the football game, and I think they got in at halftime and said, come on, let's, let's put the pressure on these guys. John Parker Wilson, good coverage on Julio Jones, and Wilson still upright. How about that? And is the pass caught? No, but almost. You know, that's where a defensive player, and I'm not sure which guy it was, the hit on John Parker. Josh Bynes. Was J Bynes didn't want to get a roughing the passer call. He thought the ball was thrown, so he pulled off. Now watch Bynes. Hits him, and he says, uh-oh, I don't want to get it. He thought the ball was away, and he didn't grab the quarterback. Jones does a great job of coming back to the ball, but then trying to keep his feet in. He says, I grabbed it, and Bynes says, oh, my. I had him for an easy sack and let him get away. So third and five. 
Mike McCoy, number 80, comes near side, and the right tackle says, I'm going to get into a comfortable stance, and he goes back a little early. Well, that's Drew Davis, number 79. Well, Gary, how about halftime trends? Well, 10 nothing's the big stat. John Parker has kind of been, you know, just playing it close to the vest. No big mistakes. I think the zero interceptions is the big thing right there. Coffee has had that one run. What was it 41 yards, Vern? Yep. Or, yeah, that was the big, big play of the whole first half. And, uh, you know, Cody Burns has been basically the offense. If he's not scrambling, they don't have much else. And Alabama continues to dominate in the first half. But, you know. Timeout Alabama. Call. The first time out of the half. Ah. Did he call timeout before the flag was thrown? He did. Wiley Old Fox. Time call. Florida leading at Florida State in uh, what Tim Brando referred to as a quagmire. Georgia loses today to Georgia Tech. South Carolina loses today to Clemson. Alabama leading here. Ole Miss a big win yesterday. Next week, we look forward to the SEC championship game. It'll be Florida against Alabama. Just a little bit on the line between those two teams as next Saturday afternoon on CBS. I think one thing we should talk about is it has been a disappointing year for the SEC in non-conference games. Uh, True. It, it has kind of not been what the SEC thought or the pride they have in the conference, and you could trace it all back to lack of quarterback play until today. I mean, look at Georgia Tech taking on Georgia. I mean, it, you just have to be honest here and say that this league does not have the excellence they had the last couple of years that I watched. It's third down now after the timeout, third and five. John Parker Wilson in the shotgun formation. Five man rush. John Parker Wilson goes right. It's almost intercepted. Oh, man. Holy cow. Uh, Gerard Powers should have had it. Yeah, it's called the ball skills. Not a very good route by Julio Jones. Watch when he makes his break, how he fades up field. Julio, instead of going straight, kind of curves it, and Gerard Powers goes right underneath. Watch this. Comes up. Instead of a straight break, he kind of fades four or five yards deep, and Powers should have easily ate that one up. John Parker Wilson has thrown only five interceptions in the first 11 games. He got away with that one. Here's P.J. Fitzgerald. Robert Dunn is deep, and he'll have a chance to return this from the 20. Starts left and comes right and looks for a wall. And tripped up as he crosses the 27-yard line. Tackle made by Ali Sharif, number 26. Robert Dunn has returned one this year for a touchdown. A nice return of 10 yards here. Time call. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, Mercedes-Benz, Sonic, and by Allstate. Iron Bowl, they often refer to families as being a house divided. There's Kevin Steele, defensive coordinator at Alabama. His daughter, Caroline, is a freshman studying interior design. She's in the middle. And Auburn, that's Linda Steele, mom on the right. And to the left, Jeff, Kevin's brother, associate director of athletics at Auburn. That was a tough Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Here's Brad Lester coming right and skips out of bounds with a nice run to the 40-yard line. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, Vern, that uh, Oklahoma game with Oklahoma State may not mean much if Baylor goes on to beat Texas Tech. They're up 28-14 to 14 now as Jacoby Jones goes in. A Baylor win, and Texas is the Big 12 South champion. Now, Graham Harrell has two fingers taped, not his throwing hand, but he's hurt. No Michael Crabtree, at least for now, in the second half. Back to you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Second down. Football. Ball is loose. Kareem Jackson forced the hit. Alabama has the football. Rolando McCain, number 25, with the recovery. Well, we haven't talked much about Terrence Cody on the inside, but 
Kareem Jackson comes in and slams this play. Watch him make the play. Cody stuffs it. Jackson actually didn't even cause it. Lester saw him coming and bobbled the ball. Look at this. He saw Kareem Jackson coming, didn't secure the ball. Uh, kind of an unforced error, but I think aggressive defense from Alabama. And so that is the first turnover of the ball game. And it gives Alabama a first down at the 39 yard line. See the graphic. Auburn has uh, turned it over 11 times with fumbles. Here's John Parker Wilson. He's got a man at the 10. Nikita Stover. It's senior to senior. And there are only nine of them on scholarship. That's the fewest in Division I alongside Middle Tennessee State. And this group of nine has never defeated the Auburn Tigers. Lee Tiffin for the extra point. What? Wow, that's returnable. There is a flag down. It's picked up by the Tigers. It was Mike McNeil, number 26, who blocked the extra point. Nikita Stover's first touchdown of the year. I think this was an improvisation by Nikita Stover. I think he improvised this route all the way. It was supposed to be a comeback. But when he gets a bite from McFadden, he just says, oh, well, I'll go deep. John Parker Wilson finds him and throws the ball. That was not a design play. It was supposed to be a comeback, and John Parker finds it, and that turnover led to seven points. John Parker Wilson's ninth touchdown pass. Nikita Stover's first touchdown catch ever. Senior quarterback John Parker Wilson has just thrown his first touchdown pass in the last four and a half games. And he finds fellow senior Nikita Stover. That's the longest streak without a TD in his career. I don't know if there's any other sport. Maybe a pitcher in baseball there anything's more valuable than a senior quarterback in college football John Parker Wilson has gone through the trials of two years and now he's been trained to be a winning quarterback in 2008 but Tommy Tuberville told us talent wise the two teams are fairly even he said he said the big difference is give me the give me their quarterback and I'd go after well yeah, there's a lot of teams in this league that like one of the four quarterbacks that really play football in this league this year. Here's the kickoff, and it's taken by Tristan Davis, number nine. Goes left, and he is knocked out of bounds up near the 35. Well, it's a murky night, kind of duck-like weather. Guess who? Time now for the Aflac trivia question. Which coach has the best winning percentage in the Iron Bowl, you have to have a minimum of three games. And I will tell you this, it is not former Alabama coach Ears Whitworth. <laughs> I'm just a student of history. It's <laughs> first down and ten. Ears Whitworth preceded Bear Bryant, by the way. Here's the handoff left side. It's Fannin. And Fannin is popped by Javier Arenas as he gets near the 39-yard line. Here's the challenge for Auburn right now and why Alabama was so, you know, insistent that if they don't beat themselves, they can't lose this game. Auburn has only scored in the SEC this year more than 16 points twice. 21 and 23 against LSU and Arkansas, and they lost both those games. Where does Auburn find points? Second and four. Burns for the day is 5 of 14. He'll keep this one on the ground. It's Fannin going left. And Fannin does pick up a first down as he crosses the 45. Javier Arenas, Justin Woodall with the tackle. Well, you know, I don't blame a coach for trying something new. I really don't. And uh, 
Tommy Tuberville said, I'm going to try to get a little bit better. Went to the spread. It didn't work. And now he's kind of trying to get this through this season and get to 2009. Would you agree with that? I you would. Know? Yes, absolutely. You know, there's two types of management, I think, strat you know, kind of like systems or people follow. One is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the other is if it ain't broke, you're not looking hard enough. And I think Tommy Tuberville said, I want to get better. It didn't work out. First down and 10. Still Fumble again. Still not working. Who got it? Alabama got it. Two turnovers in two possessions. It's Terrence Mount Cody. All 365 pounds. Well, we call it pit framing, but for Terrence Cody, he kind of stands out as the pit right there. He's on Jason Bosley, and remember the quarterback center exchange was something that at Auburn did not do until they switched over. And this time, Cody and Bosley do not handle the most fundamental thing in an offense. And boy, it could get ugly real quick now. On first down at the 45, John Parker Wilson, the handoff goes to Glenn Coffey. Remember, Tracy had indicated he was injured in the first quarter, but is back on the field. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern. Boston College is now up 21 to 7 on Maryland after. You ready for this, Vern? Billy Flutie, Doug's nephew, on the fake field goal to Jordan McMichael. A nine yard strike for the score. Oh, by the way, Florida has now moved up 38 to 9 on Florida State. 11 minutes left in the third. Plenty of time for styling for Urban Meyer. Back to you, Vern. <laughs> yeah, and he will style. He's not shy about styling. Oh, great defense. Yeah. And the ball is uh, not, the runners down at the 50 yard line. That was Derek Marks, number 94. Mark Ingram with the ball carrier. Well, final game tonight for a man who leaves a, a, a wonderful legacy. If you think about the totality of his life at the University of Tennessee. 35 years as a player, assistant coach, and for the last 17 years, head coach. Coaching his final game tonight against Kentucky, Philip Fulmer. And our thanks to him for all the cooperative visits we've had over the years. Third down. Here's John Parker Wilson, short, little screen. There's Andre Smith out there to lead the way. And it's going to be a big, big, big game for Mark Ingram and the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's a game of 27. There's only so long a defense can hang in a football game. When your offense is not doing things, the defense just can't believe. Now third and long, Alabama says, I don't want to make a mistake. Andre Smith just pushes him wide, but this is pretty simple right here when you got a screen, and then you just take it out, turn it around, and throw a very conservative play and make a first down by Ingram. Mark Ingram, a two true freshman from Flint, Michigan. He comes, uh, rather, it's, it is Ingram who's back in there. Well, Mark Ingram's father was a wide receiver at Michigan State when Nick Saban was an assistant coach at Michigan State. And Mark Ingram's dad later went on, played in the NFL for the New York Giants. And here we are years later, and Saban, the head coach, and Mark Ingram, a very a good great, player. Great lesson for all of us. Always be nice to your contacts when you leave a job. <laughs> just be nice to you. Never know when they got a son or somebody coming later, right? Don't burn fences. Don't burn any bridges. No, no bridges, rather. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. It's Ingram coming left. Now let's take a look at Home Depot's tools for success, Gary. Well, when you've got a tendency, the best thing to do is to go against your tendency, especially after a bye week, and that's what Alabama did early in this game. They went to their right, and they had success, especially this 41-yard touchdown by Coffey. See, that's what coaches are supposed to do, if you ask me. You know, they, they spend all those hours there. As a player, I always used to say, give me something, coach. And that's why some of these coaches are a little, not saying Saban versus Tuberville, but some guys get it better than others, and Nick Saban gets it. On third and six, here's John Parker Wilson. Right flat, dangerous pass, but it's complete. Julio Jones with a first and goal, Alabama. 15-yard gain. 
I, I like what you said, dangerous pass, because this goes from one hash mark all the way across to the other hash mark, and almost, Powers almost got to this one. Remember, he almost intercepted the last one out to the right like that. So John Parker Wilson, confident in his play, confident his receiver, just dials it out again. McIlwain is having a good game calling yeah, plays. Yeah, Jim Here's McElwain. A, he really is. You know, he's 19-2 and two in his last 21 games as a coach. Fresno State a year ago. Here's a handoff left side, and it's Ingram close to the goal line. He's going to be down about a yard short. You know, you know what number hits me right now? As Cody comes into the game, big 62. Terrence Cody did not play high school football until he was a senior in Fort Myers, Florida. Academic problems. He didn't qualify at Division I. He spent two years at Gulf Coast Community College in Perkinston, Mississippi. They were 12-0 and a year ago. Same play. They ran last time for a touchdown. Boom! <laughs> touchdown. There was nobody for Cody even to block. He could have weighed 150 on that one. Same play we saw before when Cody ran the play to the left. This time, nowhere even to go as Alabama's strength inside Smith, Johnson, and Caldwell was enough. And you know, I was saying the number that comes to mind is seven. Because in seven days, Alabama's going to play Florida in one of the best games, I think, of the whole year. They're going to go for two after the blocked extra point. Ingram is split wide right. Comes left. Tipped. Incomplete. So it'll be main 22-0. That was Walter McFadden. There are another seven in mind, right? How about the fact that they've not defeated Auburn in Tuscaloosa? This is their seventh try. Yeah. As Cody came on the field, he got the crowd whooping up. And, you know, he's back to almost healthy. And when he's almost healthy, he gets to play on offense. And, and I agree with you, Vern. One of these teams after this game was going to hold up the seven. Auburn seven in a row, or Alabama saying, Auburn, that's your seventh loss. Well, I look forward to this promo every week, every year. Oh, you, <laughs> you, don't, get knew. To watch, you don't get to watch this either. Huh? I knew I couldn't handle this. No, of course not. <laughs> 30 of the most beautiful women in the world. Along with special musical guest Usher for the new Victoria's <laughs> Secret Fashion Show Wednesday on CBS America's Most Watched. Somebody's watching it. Network. I just got a flag thrown on me. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was Out bad. of bounds. No. It no, not. it did not. Mario Fannin picks it up. That, of course, was a free ball. He. Couldn't take the chance that uh, it was going to be recovered by Alabama. This looked like it definitely was going to go out of bounds, and then it took a funny bounce and went the other way. Kind of like Alabama's season this year, if you ask me. Six and six a year ago, and all of a sudden, who would have thought Alabama one game away for playing with the national championship in an undefeated season. You know, there are a lot of folks who remember the 92 national championship team. Right. Do you see similarities? They had Jay Barker, didn't throw it a lot. It was defense. I'm having trouble remembering last week's game, 1992. Uh, gotcha. Well, yes, there is. Good defense. Right. Quarterback that doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And they got a roll going, and they're playing solid football, making teams beat them. Okay, on a murky evening in late November, here's the deck. Which coach has the best winning percentage in the Iron Bowl? All of you who said Paul Bear Bryant, step to the rear. Tommy Tuberville, a 7-2 record, including, of course, the last six in a row. Yeah, well, that's coming into today. Bear may be gaining on him. Right? Yes. Bear just keeps winning. Second down and nine. Play fake by Cody Burns. Steps up. Nobody open. 
And he is caught and dropped. It'll be third and long. Luther Davis, number 96. Well, you know what? Very prescient of you. If uh, Tuberville loses this game, Bear does go back on top. Well, that reminds us of that story. I, mean, I think Mel Moore told us about Bear Bryant when he bought that meat packing company, and then the Pope decided that every Catholics could eat meat on Friday, and the headline in the Birmingham paper was Bear Wins Again. <laughs> so Bear wins again. It's amazing what a presence he still has around here. On third down, Burns deep. He's got man coverage. And that one's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. It was intended for Derek Winter. Well, the athletic director, that's his daughter, Heather, to the left. And Mal Moore, the athletic director, played here for Bear in the early 60s. And what a season he's had and how richly he deserves a, a lot of credit Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Well, I mean, he had to come back with Bear Bryant. Excuse me. With, well, he got the next best thing, Nick Saban. He had yeah. to come back with him, and he did. He's a longtime football coach, too. Coached with Gene Stallings, who won that national championship. And, oh, it's almost blocked. And Durst hobbling a little bit. Here's Arenas. Oof, oof. Out to the 50. Courtney Harden makes the tackle, a 46-yard punt. Take a look at the near block. Here's Durst. Rolando McCain. And here's Arenas. Won't that be fun to watch Arenas play against that Florida special teams group that they have there? Mm -hmm. First down and 10. Left side, Coffee. Across the 45 and down at the 43. Mike Blank, number 93, made the tackle. So, I guess you keep trying to wonder, how did Alabama make this happen, you know, this year? What You know, I don't think anybody expected this. I mean, I saw a local article about, did anybody expect that Alabama would be undefeated playing for the national championship and you'd have... Notre Dame, Tennessee, and Michigan the way they are. There. Right, right. Well, if you think back to last summer, at the here's the uh, handoff to coffee again. At Media Days in Birmingham in July, and there are 800 people right. from the media who come to this thing, Alabama was picked third in the SEC West behind the Auburn Tigers and LSU. And uh, here's Auburn. Uh, this uh, experiment with Tony Franklin went awry. They've tried to recover and haven't been able to under Tommy Tuberville uh, and Nick Saban. What a coaching job. Tommy told me on the field that, and on the phone also when we talked to him, that you were part of also, Vern, is that he's kept his whole class intact, though, that he recruited. Most of those kids were recruited because of the spread offense, but he still kept them. And uh, that run is going to be to the 40. Let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim. All right, Vern, you had to know the Texas Tech score would change with their offense. They're now behind Baylor 28-21 as Shannon Wood scores from a yard out. By the way, Florida State did get a touchdown. Their first of the day, it's 38-15. Percy Harvin out for the rest of the day with an ankle injury, so we might have that to talk about all week in preparation to the fast track at the Georgia Dome next week. Vern, back to you. All right, Tim, of course, he had... Uh, Heel surgery back in the spring and told us many times this is the best he's ever felt since he was a sophomore in high school. Fourth down, they'll go for it. The handoff is to Coffey, got it. First down, Alabama at the 34. If um, you were putting the odds on anybody on Florida having an ankle injury and playing, I would put it on Percy Harvin. He's had that ankle injury for three years. He plays all the time. But again, you look at this Alabama team, and they run the ball successfully. Now they're running right as well as left. Can they do this against Florida? What do you think? Cl clearly there's only really two good football teams this year. Ole Miss is really coming out. I will right. say that. Yep. But the two dominant teams are Alabama, Florida. I mean, it's like uh, Michigan, Ohio State. You know, it's, it's a lot of leagues. Texas, Oklahoma. Ingram to the 22. 
Pretty to watch, isn't it? Reminds me of a cry you hear often around here. Roll Tide. Yes, it is. Wow. Ingram, such a smart runner for a young runner. Power, discipline. Not at all at all, is he, of the no. situation. I remember Nick Saban told us earlier in the year he is the most naturally yes. gifted of his running backs. I think that's true. Mark Ingram remains on the field. We got one on one out here. They'll run it. Doesn't matter. They got nine on nine inside and they're just mashing them. Ingram tackled by Trez Doolittle, number 99. Doolittle, a 60 year senior for the Auburn Tigers. Nothing can turn on a football team or discourage a defense more than just mashing it right down their throat like this. Two and a half to go in the third. Seventh play of the drive coming up. The first six have all been. Runs, huh? Well, why not? I would think we'll probably see the same here. We do. Up the middle. Touchdown, Alabama. Mark Ingram gets the score. You know what? One of the key plays in this game was the Brad Lester fumble. And, yes, and, and the dropped interception also. Back-to-back yes. -back plays. Auburn basically beat themselves. And the one thing we talked about is Auburn had no chance if they beat themselves. Alabama could make a couple mistakes and win. Extra point is up. Knocked home by Lee Tiffin. That Brad Lester fumble occurred earlier in this quarter, and at the time, it was 10-0. Watch Antoine Caldwell, the senior center, do a great job blocking the linebacker right there. Opens it up. Mike Johnson cleans up to the top of the screen on the next player, and it's a walk-in for Ingram. Following Caldwell's block, it's a touchdown. Caldwell, one of the nine seniors, working on his second undergraduate degree. Alabama celebrating on the sideline inside the NFL. Now on Showtime every Wednesday. Join J.B., Phil Sims, Warren Sapp, and Chris Collinsworth for all the best in highlights, insights, and more Wednesday only on Showtime. Lee Tiffin will kick off. Ingram punctuated that last drive with a 14-yard touchdown run. This is Tristan Davis. And now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Here's a lesson in why sometimes simple can beat exotic. Tez, Tez Doolittle is going to stunt here. Bynes comes here. Chris Evans goes there. Watch how Alabama used the stunt against Auburn to open the hole. Run away from it, run in it, block it, and pick it up exactly. That's as good as you can do from a guard to center handling a stunt and a defense run themselves right out of a play. Here's how muddy things have gotten for Auburn in this quarter. They have one first down and two fumbles. They've got a first and ten now at the 20 yard line and a, well several flags are thrown. Pick your man here. Well, Some, a lot of them move. Yeah, it's, it's been dead ball, false start, 71 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Coach Tubbs said at halftime drop passes, but it got worse as the game went along. Drop handoff, as you referred to already, Vern, drop quarterback center exchange for a turnover and a dropped interception. That's basically three turnovers. No way you can win. It has been relatively penalty free. On the sweep, it's Lester going wide to the left, and he is in jail. Luther Davis was the first there. Well, keep your hands up, keep your feet moving, find the ball carrier. Cody. 
goes. The only one to go down on that play. The other 10 players for Alabama keep their feet. Cody actually gets back up and gets back into play. But they didn't need him. Second and third, uh, second and 18. Well, make it second and 17. Wow. Lorenzo Washington supplying the pressure. Well, ball's thrown slightly behind. Lester can't come up with it. And right now, Big Cody says, let me see if I can pass rush here. And oh, goodness. Really couldn't get it, but a lot of push, wasn't it? That was a good job by Tyrone Green there. Burns now 5 of 16 for 47 yards. Got some time now, but he can't find anybody open, so he'll freelance it. He's got men now. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Montez Billings after all of that. We're uh, under a minute in the third quarter. Yeah, we're going to see a punt. <laughs> Cody does all that. Cody Burns does all that, but Alabama State disciplined and did not allow him to have any throw on the play. So in this quarter, and this will be the final possession for Auburn, barring a turnover, one first down, a punt, two fumbles, and a punt. Durst, seventh punt this afternoon. Fair catch. Arenas at the 41-yard line. Now let's get on to uh, Tracy Wolfson. Guys, Nick Saban is not just all about football, although he may seem that way at most times. He's favorite food, Little Debbie oatmeal cream pies. He eats two each morning. His favorite movies, well, it's not surprising. He's not all that into comedies, but he does like Clint Eastwood films and his good luck charm, a penny. His daughter, Kristen, gives him one before each game. This year, she's given him some pretty good pennies, guys, so far. He told me that he holds all the pennies from this year in his left pocket and the one from this game in his right. So he's got 11 in the left. And the 12th is about to make a transfer. Wow. Yeah, he could switch it over now. I think so. There is the handoff up the middle and the tackle made by Zach Clayton, number 98. Well, BCS standings coming into this weekend. Auburn goes on to win. They'll uh, maintain that. There's the controversy one. Texas, I did, I said Auburn, I meant Alabama. Texas, Oklahoma. Yeah, here's the one, though, look at this. Texas yeah. Tech. Wow. Well, Texas, of course, pleading their case this week, and because if there is a three-way tie in the Big 12 South, I think everybody knows this, it will be the, the, the representative in the championship game will be decided by the BCS standings as revealed on Sunday. What a mess. Yeah, well, we can talk about that. The, the, the SEC does it different than the Big 12. I like the SEC tiebreaker way better. Texas probably would as well. We'll talk more about that in a well, moment. Well, when we come back, we're going to explain it because it's key and it's huge difference. That's the end of three. John Parker Wilson, Rashad Johnson, senior quarterback, senior, safe. We are Alabama. Roll Tide. They are rolling right now. You mentioned nine scholarship seniors. There are actually 13 on the team. One of the scholarship seniors unable to play today, Will Oakley had shoulder surgery, but uh, they've done quite a bit in their four years. They have persevered. Here's Julio Jones. That one is overthrown. It'll be fourth down. So that's going to bring on the punting unit. P.J. Fitzgerald will send it deep to Robert Dunn. Twenty-nine zip. 
Bert Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, the Iron Bowl from Tuscaloosa. See Corey Reamer, the linebacker, who's the uh, punt protector. Now Fitzgerald, side of his foot. And boy, Saban, Saban is out on the field. Wow. I mean, it's, uh, it's next week already for Nick Saban. I'm telling you right now, it is next week. And now, it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Well, stay with us. Alabama gets the first three points. Lee Tiffin, a 37-yard field goal. Then Glenn Coffey gets to the right side and outside and scoots down the sidelines. 41-yard run, 10-0 Alabama. It stood that way through the third quarter after a fumble recovery. This little improvisational play between John Parker Wilson and Nikita Stover. First career touchdown for Stover. Extra point was blocked. But then Ingram got a one-yard touchdown run to make it 22-0 after a fumble again. And then Ingram, his second touchdown of the night, 14-yard run, 29 nothing, and that's where we stand early in this fourth quarter as the Alabama Crimson Tide tries to hold on to its number one ranking in every poll and the BCS standards, even including the computers. First down and 10. Here's Cody Burns back to throw. Little screen right side. Tackle misses a block. And the receiver pays a price. Woo! Wow, that was not <laughs> that was not fun if you're uh, dressed in white. Well, we talked about the difference in the Big 12 and their tie-breaking system and uh, the, the SEC. Okay, real quick. In the Big 12, the highest-ranked team goes to the championship if it's a three-way tie. In the SEC, it's the same tiebreaker except... The top two teams, if they're within five spots of each other, head-to-head -head goes above the ranking. That's the way it should be. What happens on the field has to matter. And that, of course, that plays right into the Texas-Oklahoma argument. And how about a Tech update? Once again, here's Tim. All right, Vern and Gary in Lubbock. Baylor and Texas Tech, 14 unanswered now for the Raiders. Baron Batch scores from three yards out. They reviewed it. Art Bryles came on the field. Mike Leach came on the field. It's a touchdown. Texas is rooting for a Texas Tech loss. So I could tell you a lot more, but even my brother-in-law says, back to Vern. <laughs> All right, Tim. We appreciate the quiet. Oh, that was well, good. On first down. First Javier Arenas with the tackle. Well, Rod Smith with the catch. There's the story right there. Texas already won their game. Texas Tech tied, and Oklahoma plays tonight. And it goes to the tiebreaker if all three win. The fifth one, right at the bottom, right there, is going to go down to the fifth one. Highest BCA, BCS rec ranking at the end of the regular season. First down and 10 for Auburn after that 28-yard catch. Here's Cody Burns back, and he's caught and dropped. Back to the 48-yard line. Well, we can argue into the night about this thing. You and I aren't going to argue because I think we agree on this. But if you – here's here's the argument, Texas-Oklahoma. I think a regular season meeting on a neutral field must mean something. Sure. And Texas, seven weeks ago tonight, defeated Oklahoma – 35-25. Look at this. Even here. But let's say this for Oklahoma. I don't know if anyone's playing any better football than Oklahoma. Right. See, this is what's crazy about the BCS. It doesn't reward teams that get better as the season goes along. Perfect example. Oregon State. What if Oregon State has just found their game now? Who knows? You know, who are we to decide? Eh, it's still a process. I get it. I know all the reasons why we can't do it. But in this instance... And I like Oklahoma, and I think they could beat anybody. But in this instance, if I was voting, and I don't want to vote, I don't want to be involved, I would have to give the nod to Texas. Of course, one part of the equation, coaches vote. Here's Cody Burns, deep left side, good coverage. Adjustment by Rod Smith, incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. 
Eric Anders with the pressure. Well, I thought there was a lot of hand fighting going on that time. Apparently not enough. <laughs> how do you define well, I, enough? I don't know. I'll tell you how I, I define it. Yeah. When the score is what it is, let them play. 29 nothing. 12.46 to go, and here's Clinton Durst on to punt for the eighth time. Yep. Javier Arenas. He's been bottled up pretty well today. Durst has been quite effective. Arenas has had a few opportunities. Yeah, good punt again. Arenas lets it go over his head, and that's good. Oh, no. Slid into the... Yeah. And they're going to say gonna be he had down control. At one, I guess so. Say he had control. I don't know if he had control of the ball, though. That's what's still being discussed. Ball bounces. No, he, I don't think he had control of that football. Well, it did cross the goal line. Therefore, it is a touchback. Right. Robert Shiver. If he wouldn't have dropped it, he'd have got it the benefit of the play, but he dropped it. That's what overruled it. 29 zip, Alabama. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Liberty Mutual, Wrangler, Nissan. And by Coca-Cola Zero. Don't forget, later in the game tonight, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. We've got 12.34 to go in this one. 73rd Iron Bowl game. Glenn Coffey, number 38, is the running back. He gets the handoff from John Parker Wilson. Breaks loose. Watch out. Oh, he got caught. Boy, if he had been able to shake that last tackle. Yeah, Mike McNeil was the only guy that had a chance, or he was going the distance. This is, um, right now, Vern, you could call the place for Alabama. It's just McIlwain is closing his eyes, putting his finger down on his play chart, and anything he calls works right now. There's Jim right, McIlwain to the left. Yep. Let's see. How about this one? Yep, that'll work. Anything running the ball has been pretty successful. 12.04 to go. Like that. Yep. Now well, let's uh, once again go down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, how important is this game for these two teams? Up 29 nothing. Nick Saban came over to his offense on the bench and said emphatically, keep playing, don't let up, and then screamed the loudest I've ever heard him scream at his players, said, don't you know how much I hate these guys? And, guys, that's the edited version. Oh, wow. Whoa, that might be block room material. Does Tracy get credit for that, too, the wolf? The wolf. Yeah. Hey. It, I, everybody knows that. It's no big deal. You know, I mean, it's, well, you know, it would, stuff never bothered Except that Saban had uh, all those years at LSU. You know, he, he's gotten into this Iron Bowl thing in the second year. Right. I think the vision of Auburn players last year holding up six. Right. Probably. Well, he yeah. gets it. He gets it. You got to win the games you're supposed to win. This year, you got a way better team. You know, it's funny. We were talking to Nick Friday. And I asked him point blank. I said, Nick, in your bye week, because Florida is so different, did you use some of your bye week to go over Florida stuff before the Auburn game? And he said, I can't tell you that. I said, oh, come on. And he goes, ask me Sunday. <laughs> right? Oh, great. <laughs> 29 zip here. There are a lot of interesting things going on elsewhere. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vern, 21 unanswered now, trailing 28 to 14 to Baylor with no Michael Crabtree available. Graham Harold to Detron Lewis, a four yard hookup. Wonderful catch in the corner. And the Red Raiders are up by seven, so Oklahoma, breathe easily now. Back to you. 
which now brings it to the vote. And remember, the second to last vote is going to be the big vote. One third is the coaches, okay, or two thirds the coaches, one third is the computers. Remember, in this vote, the coaches do not have to put their name on the vote. It's anonymous. In only, this one, only the last vote right. they have to publish who they voted for. Here's Terry Grant. Terry Grant getting only his 29th carry of the season. Well, how about a chaos theory in 08? How can a one-loss team that doesn't win the conference championship make the title game? You got to stay with us on this one. If a one-loss Texas or Oklahoma team does not play in the Big 12 championship, if the Big 12 South champion loses yeah, right. the title game, don't think that's going to happen, <laughs> but we're, we're all into hypotheticals right. here. The final BCS champions, you've got to assume that Alabama or Florida will be one of them. Southern Cal lurking now. But. Yeah. Well, I think Penn State would have an argument then. Okay. They beat Oregon State. Boise State and Utah both undefeated. Ball State undefeated. Now, I'm remember, not suggesting they're going to get in there. So as we went through this chaos theory and we, we worked on it, we said, well, what about Penn State? If Oregon State wins the Pac-10 and Penn State throttled Oregon State, don't they get to put their hand up in the air? Think about it. Eight team playoff. <laughs> Eight not, team. I know it's not going to happen no. in my lifetime. Well, but I'm a dreamer. I'll say one thing about that one loss team not win the championship. 2001 Nebraska, 2003 Oklahoma. Mm. Grant going left. Terry Grant had a big year last year. Just hasn't been a significant part of the offense this season. But he's got a first down. And now, when will Nick Saban start to think about next week and get some of his starters out of this football game? I would think after this drive is completed, well, however it is completed. 71's off the field. Yeah, okay. Marlon Davis, 76, is off the field. John Michael Boswell is in at right tackle now, so he may have just uh, hurt you. First down and 10. And the, whoa, Grant slips it. A little moisture still on the ground. 8 10 to go in this one. Now, Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete for Auburn, Tez Doolittle, sixth year senior. That's not a mistake. A 4.0 grade point average. Graduated in the fall of 2007. And for the Alabama Crimson Tide, Bobby Greenwood, senior from Prattville. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the school's general scholarship fund. Nice job by uh, Nick Saban here. Taking his players, his offensive linemen off first, one at a time to get a crowd cheer for each of those guys that don't get recognized that much in the offensive line. On second down, it's Grant going left. I would think we've seen the last of coffee today. Right, only the center, Anton Caldwell, still in the game, and I bet he comes out right now, the fifth player, and here comes Big Caldwell. He's a class act. Antoine Caldwell. Well, you know, you'd usually... And here comes John Parker Wilson. Greg McElroy takes his spot. It's third and 12. Grant, it'll be fourth down. You know, you usually... Don't get the game you want, you know. I mean, we were like, we could see this. Talk what you want about the SEC maybe not being to the level of last year. The two teams on the top are, and they're playing great football, and we wondered if we would get that game, and we're going to get that game next week. We're going to have an undefeated, top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide, 12-0 and against a once-defeated Florida team that may be playing as well as anybody in the and, country right now. And the contrast in styles is the, you know, new school Urban, old school Nick, spread, run. You know, the only thing is similar is both coaches have won a national championship. On fourth down, McElroy rolls out, finds Smelly the tight end. It will go over on downs. 
as Brad Smelly is tackled at the 23 yard line. So Auburn will take over. Exactly six minutes to play in the Iron Bowl, 73rd version. And the Alabama Crimson Tide are going to win for the first time ever against Auburn in Tuscaloosa. First down and 10. Here's Cody Burns back to throw. And he fires it short to Mario Fannin. Fannin reverses field fumble. That ball is still loose. And I think Auburn got it. James Swinton, number 16. There's a player down at the 33-yard line. Swinton recovered. Now they're saying... Yep, he dug it away. It was a shot, Johnson. It's the guy who got the ball, I think, at the bottom of the pile. Alabama recovers. This almost was the best play of the day for Auburn. The fumble going forward. Swinton thought he had it, but 49 takes it away from him. Three fumbles in the second half, and Alabama gets the ball back. Player of the game, Direct TV player of the game, Glenn Coffey, had a big first half. He winds up with 144 yards over the 100-yard marker again. Fifth career game, 100-plus. And Roy Upchurch, number five, listed as the third-string tailback, is on the field right now. First down and ten. And that one's going to come to the 50-yard line. Jake Ricks, number 91. Well, we've talked a little bit about Nick Saban's undefeated Alabama team going in to take on Florida next week. Well, they both got great numbers, but I think they differ in this way. It, it, it's kind of a, a good picture. I think Alabama, the sum is greater than the parts. I think when you look at Florida, the parts sometimes make them what they are, and the spread, the sum, just highlights the parts that beat you. I like that. Just came up with that during the commercial. During the yeah, commercial during break? Commercial. <laughs> okay. It wasn't that extra jolt of coffee last night. <laughs> Roy Upchurch. Walter McFadden makes the tackle. That's a gain of 12. Well, Tommy Tuberville is going to suffer a defeat in this Iron Bowl encounter for the first time since 1999. Oh, 2001, I beg your pardon. That was the last Alabama win. First and 10. I remember you said when they, well, I'm after they lost on the road to Auburn midseason, and I mentioned that there was noise in the system in Auburn. You said, "Doesn't the guy get a mulligan?" Mulligan, yeah. You well, think? yes. Oh, of course he's going to get a mulligan, okay. and they don't lose all that many players. Okay, and, and the first thing Tommy said is, "I'm going to go out and hire an offensive coordinator. I'm not hiring within the staff. I'm going after the game right out to hire an offensive coordinator." The other thing Tuberville does well is come back. Last time he had a down year, he rebuilt very quickly. So it won't be easy because although they don't have a lot of seniors listed, they have a couple, two or three juniors that might turn pro on them. So, you know, it, it, it's I, I think the quarterback spot is still going to have to get a lot better, though. Right. Cody Burns is a real work in progress. Rushing yards in this ball game. And here to the right side is Jeremy Griffin, who's getting his first carry of the year. Let's go back to Tim. All right, Vernon Gary, I'm going to take you to Tobacco Road. It not, no, it's not hoops, it's football. It is a fourth down play. And Thaddeus Lewis is picked off by Tremaine Goddard. The Heels win it for Butch Davis. A big uh, year for North Carolina, and it's gone final. Texas Tech does beat Baylor, which means Oklahoma can breathe a sigh of relief. They need to take care of business tonight in that matchup with Okie State. 
Back to you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we've got a third down here with three minutes I, to go in this one. I yep. was hoping for a commentary on this thing from, from Tim for <laughs> maybe we, two minutes. We got that last week. Here's the pass deep. Wow. Marquise Mays. Yep. Touchdown. Wow. That's a little in your face. Well, no, I don't think so. You got to get your backup quarterback ready just in case. Okay. All right, let's call it a punctuation point. Well, whatever. McElroy to Marquise Mays. Bump and run to the outside. If you're going to play bump and run, I get to throw it on you. McElroy's first touchdown brings a look of real joy to Nick Saban's face. Wow. Lee Tiffin with the extra point. All right, a punctuation point. You got it. Here's the safety. Quarterback has to hold the safety. Here is the matchup. Let's see what happens. Quarterback holds the safety in the middle of the field. Mays gets open. Ball perfectly thrown to the outside shoulder. Just like they teach it. Catch it over the outside shoulder. Beat your man. Hold the safety. Backup quarterback says, hey, I get to play too. Thirty-six zip. If you're wondering, if you're slightly curious, last time Alabama shut out Auburn in the Iron Bowl, you go back to the national championship year, oh, 1992. That's a good omen, huh? I don't recall having a bigger game that meant more than this Alabama-Florida game will have be next week. And I've done national championship games. This will be in that realm, that big of a football game. Yes. Although I did do one Iowa-Wisconsin game one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Corey Smith kicks it off. Tristan Davis, number nine. And Smith has to chase him, and he got him. And there's a flag on the near side, and a little tussle breaks out. Demetrius Good made the tackle to save the touchdown. And a flag on the near side. Personal foul, 89 to the receiving team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Darvin Adams, number 89. That's going to wipe out that 40 yard kickoff return and cost him a lot of field position. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. Me. That's it. exactly what I'd be doing. Well, officiating crew today, this is field judge Richard Morales just signaled the touchdown on Marquise Mays. Touchdown, Richard Morales. You see him at the right side in the corner. There's the touchdown. Got it. Richard Morales working his final game in the SEC. Thanks for all the work. 14 years. Uh, Tivo, that one for the grandkids right there, huh? You betcha. First down and 10 with 2.38 to go. Brad Lester, number one. And let's go back once again to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Vern. BC goes up 28 to 14 on Maryland. Robert Francois runs back a Chris Turner interception, 36 yards for a touchdown. Looks like BC and Virginia Tech in a rematch in the ACC title game. Here's a commentary for you, uh, Gary. This will be the biggest SEC championship ever played since its inception in '92. There's your commentary. Back to you. And I bet you were there. There you too. go. Yeah, there, there you there. go. I believe it. Can't wait. We have the Brando stamp of approval. That's right. And he's right, too. Yep. 
Prince Hall, number 21, makes the tackle. Well, we've uh, talked uh, quite a bit about these nine scholarship seniors. John Parker Wilson among them. Rashad Johnson out of tiny Sullivan, Alabama. Antoine Caldwell, already a graduate. So is John Parker Wilson and Rashad Johnson. As a matter of fact, there's six graduates among the nine. And they will celebrate for a little while tonight. Saban's not going to let them think too much about this one. 120 to go. Cody Burns goes right. Prince Hall, Lorenzo Washington with the tackle. I promise you this, no Alabama fans have left. How, how about this? As well as Alabama's playing, undefeated, number one in the country, they probably will not be favored in the game against Florida. That's what people think about Florida, the way they're playing right now. What a matchup. Strength versus speed, spread versus tight ends, old school versus new school. Clinton Durst on to punt. It was two years ago this weekend. We were here, had dinner with Mal Moore. He knew then what we did not know, that he had made a decision to let Mike Shula go. Remember, Joe Namath argued vehemently right. against that decision. But two key players on this team, two key ones, John Parker Wilson and Andre Smith was Mike Shula players. They don't win them without those two guys. Now Moore set his sights on Nick Saban. Sometime soon, Mal Moore is going to write a book. <laughs> and he will reveal the entire story of how he got Nick Saban to agree to become the coach at Alabama. We've heard portions. It's quite a story. I know one thing. There's a checkbook somewhere in there. Let's go down to Tracy with Nick Saban. Coach, after six straight losses to Auburn, to finally get that win against them, how important is it for this team? Well, it's great for our fans. It's great for our players. We don't have one player on our team that ever beat Auburn. That was our goal. Kids, guys did a great job of focusing on this game and not looking ahead. And they don't have a guy on their team that lost to us. So, you know, this is something that we wanted for our seniors. We're glad, but we're also happy for all these fans that we have here. It's great for the University of Alabama. Well, you mentioned it. Looking ahead, now you can focus on Florida, the SEC championship next next week. They are playing their best football right now, one of the hottest teams in the country. How do you beat them? Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we got time to work on that. You know, they got a great football team. They've got a lot of good players. we got a lot of good players. It'll be a great game. You're probably being considered the underdog going in there. Is there a respect factor at all? That's all right. I know it don't bother me any. I'm just happy we won this game. I'm happy for our players, and I'm happy for our fans. Thanks, Coach. Thank Congratulations. That brings to mind his statement <laughs> earlier. I know I don't look like it. I'm happy. But I'm happy. <laughs> Oh, come on, undefeated. What a season. And it's time now for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Here's Eli Gold of the Alabama Radio Network. First and 10, Bama from the 41. The gift of coffee gets outside down the right sideline. He may go 20, 15, 10, 5, 41 yards. Touchdown, Alabama. 9-0 for the Crimson Tide. Coffee with 144 yards in the ball game. And if we uh, forgot to re remind you, <laughs> next Saturday, the undefeated top-ranked Crimson Tide against the second-ranked Florida Gators from Atlanta. For Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, all of us at CBS Sports, see you next week. <laughs>